All right, today we'll, we will be covering uh, Torque 3D, which is a game engine that was recently released for free, in fact, uh, three days ago. So we're going to cover a little bit of how to get it up and running um, and the basics of it, hopefully in a series of tutorials. So first, what you're going to do is, uh, this is setting up in a Windows environment, so um, I'm not sure about the Linux environment. I'm not sure I haven't tried it, but uh, usually if you're running Windows, hit clone in Windows and you can install the software there or you can download the zip file. Um, if you install the GitHub software, which is actually pretty nice, you can sit there and, and clone it um, and make changes to it and sync it back if you have push privileges. But uh, after you have that, you will have it in a folder on your hard drive. Um, I just have it in my documents, GitHub, which is where it puts it automatically. Um, and then Torque 3D, you're just going to go ahead and run that. And when it opens up, your projects page will open up and there won't be any projects in it. None of this will work, obviously, but first we're going to go to documentation and setting up your environment. And that's actually a pretty crucial step um, since it needs a lot, of, a lot of files to download. So essentially after you have Torque 3D downloaded, you're going to have to download Visual Studio 2008 or 2010 Express. I actually, since I'm a student or was a student, I have 2010 full version of it. Um, so we're not going to cover installing that. That's pretty simple. Um, you can take a look at the setting up page. Uh, that has some simple things like registering project and how to open up all that, but nothing too, nothing too important or difficult. The DirectX SDK, um, I have a newer version of the DirectX SDK already installed since I do a lot of gaming. Um, I did attempt to download and install it, but it gives you an error like 1023, I believe, um, if you already have a newer version installed. And this is a difficult one, actually, uh, the physics SDK. Uh, the SDK, you have to create an account, and then you have to download it, and it comes in a zip file. There's no actual installer, uh, at least not that I could tell. Um, so what I had to do was just dump it in C drive physics and just unzipped it there. And once it was installed there, I needed to tell Torque 3D where it was. Um, so if you go to projects and once you create a project, uh, just hit new project and name it whatever you want. It'll copy a bunch of files in. Here we'll do it right now since we're YouTube project all in caps um, and I did full physics because why wouldn't you um, it, it'll copy these files in and we'll go ahead and pause and wait all right and then it'll tell you where your new project is it's fine and dandy so um, YouTube project and if you hit open folder you can notice it opens a folder right at the base root of it <coughs> Essentially, build files is how it builds your game. You notice Visual Studio 2010. Um, there is no SLN file. That's what we're going to be generating. Um, and <clears throat> the game, that's where a lot of your, obviously, where uh, everything in your game is, all your art and everything. And that's where we'll be adding models later um, that you can mess around with in game. <clears throat> So if we go down uh, to the bottom here, there's your YouTube project.exe that launches it once it's ready to go. Um, but let's go ahead and go back and essentially generate projects is what we need to run initially. And you'll see this here. Fatal error, we were not able to find a valid path to the physics SDK. And uh, that's what we need to add since uh, it doesn't know where it's installed. So that's under build files, config, and project.conf. What you'll notice here is I have my old project.conf here. I've added, I commented adding the path to physics and just, just copied and pasted that, pasted that into there. Copy, paste, save. And there might be a better way to do this, but I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen any, any notes about that. So that's your project.conf. Um, we're going to go back to YouTube project and do generate projects. You notice now we have no error. It's going to go ahead and go through the project creation process. I'll pause while it does that. And as you can see, writing solution file 
youtubeproject.sln, which you need, I guess. Um, and hit enter, and there you go. You're good as gold. So if we go back into here, youtubeproject.sln, and you can open that if you want in your uh, Visual Studio. And it's going to pull in all of your files um, for that, since it's an SLN file. And you'll be able to go ahead and page through all of your resources. But uh, essentially, uh, that's something for a much more advanced tutorial, so we'll be covering that later since I don't even know much about it. So um, I do know to add iron sights, I had to go into these files and, and add, add settings. So. So essentially after you've done that, you are pretty much uh, good to go. Uh, if everything else is installed, you should be should be all set. So and these files are pretty well pretty well documented. So it tells you to create create new project, which we are, we've already done all this. Um, this is where you open the source code if you want, and that's where it goes to the SLN file, which we generated with that um, that bat file. Um, and apparently, I don't know, I haven't tried this, the quickest method is to edit source, 2010, hit OK. Oh, it does work in 2010 now, so that's another way to do it. Instead of manually finding that SLN file, you can go ahead and hit edit source and it'll open that up, so that's even easier. Alright, and... Essentially, this is, you should probably read through this, this tells you a lot about what exactly is in that that file. Alright, now we're back here, and you'll notice here, your project's here. We're going to go ahead and hit World Editor. I'm just going to load all this up. First time may take a while, but as you can see, we are now in the world editor. And right now, we're editing empty room. You can lo preload a terrain uh, if you want. Um, but essentially, that's your player there. Um, that's the spawn point there. And the tool, the uh, controls are actually rather intuitive. Um, right now, I'm holding down my uh, right mouse button, and I'm able to use my WASD keys to free fly around the map. You hold down middle mouse and then you can use the WASD keys to move backwards, forwards, whatever axis you're looking at, it'll it'll move along the axes. Um, you can change your camera view to person camera if you want. Um, and what if you hit F11, it actually loads you in the game and you can test out anything, any changes you've made. Um, you notice here it's just empty room, shadow. You can run. Um, you know, uh, I had iron sights on the other one. You have to edit a few files to do that, but yeah, this is how you zoom in. Fairly simple. That's just how you test out your game. So, any any changes you make will be easy to test in real time, pretty much. All right. So this is the basics. Let's go back to the world editor. Notice here it's pretty much back to where it was. You can change the camera back to the free camera and rotate around. And you notice anything you've done will be saved. So these are our spawn points right there. <coughs> and as you can see, he's still on that. So <coughs> that's fairly simple. That's how to go in and out of that. But let's start with um, some world editing. Let's say you want to add some terrain so hit on the oops, hit the terrain editor and then it'll ask you if there's no terrain it'll ask you if you want to create a new terrain let's hit yes and then we'll just do field and you can choose grass rock grass on dry which is probably brown grass dirt grass let's just do let's do dirt grass let's do 512 
let's hit noise on that and that'll kind of create random randomizations of it so as you can see large rather large noise um, was it's a large map so as you can see it created a randomized bit of terrain um, and it keeps that as a massive a massive object see field is the entire field that is generated you can click on it you can move it back and forth up and down But let's say you don't like that or you want to make changes to it. Um, under the terrain editor, you can do a bunch of different things. You can, you know, raise the height. And, and it's not, you're not forced to work with obviously the entire thing once the terrain is generated. Um, you can sit there and work on little individual parts, adding height. Obviously, that looks pretty crappy, but <laughs> um, you can lower the height as well um, if you want to add lower height variables in here. Um, you can do your brush heading as a circle or a square. You can take the size, you know, up to pretty large, 22, and then that'll take the entire thing down. Um, and if you, if some of that looks pretty crappy, what you can do is you can kind of smooth it out. Obviously, it still doesn't look great, but um, you can set the height. That'll cut the height off on certain certain objects. Um, you can flatten, as you can see there. Probably should. Be careful where you use that. That'll flatten things. Um, this will paint noise. That's kind of nice. If you have something that looks too bland, you can paint some noise, random noise on it. Um, um, it's probably best done on flat fields. Maybe something that looks a little too flat. You just kind of add a little bit of bumps and rockers to it. Um, so that's the very, very basics of the train editor. Um, and obviously, you can always. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's really big size. The pressure made it such so big. But um, essentially, when you hit F11, always make sure to change it to person camera. Or maybe you can do that in game. I don't know. But as you can see now, you can run around in the terrain, look at it. Obviously, it looks pretty crappy now, but. Um, And you can, if I could jump higher, <laughs> you could interact with it and jump on it. So, 